the year of 1965, 365 days, each with headaches and heartaches, death and destruction, laughter and tears. And the tears flowed all over the world in January with the passing of Sir Winston Churchill, predominantly the man of the century. A man who created history and will forever remain most notable in its pages. Two internationally known Australians are also gone, Dr. H.B. Evatt and one of our most famous cricketers, Bill Woodfull. Jeff Freeman, Australian speed car champion, met violent death at the wheel. Idol of the crowds, the 27-year-old speed ace seemed destined for world fame until this tragic moment. Renowned Hollywood stuntman Paul Mance died as spectacularly as he had lived, piloting this aircraft for a scene in the movie Flight of the Phoenix. Disaster of another kind as the Mount Isa dispute stretching into months of deadlock cost Australia's export economy one million pounds a week. Unofficial miners leader Big Pat Mackey has a moment on centre stage only to disappear entirely from the theatre. In the worst drought this century, nature strikes a blow at our primary industry. Stock losses reach staggering proportions as weakened animals in a constant search for sustenance drop in their tracks. Fortunately, December rains bring many farmers the year's best Christmas present. A shooting war abroad sees Australia involved in the year's hottest trouble spot, Vietnam. Subject to intermittent protests at home, our part in this battle of ideologies goes on nevertheless. And we are now committed to help resolve peace for the oppressed. Fifty years ago, the place was different, but the cause much the same. More than 300 original Anzacs went back to Gallipoli, a pilgrimage in memory of comrades who died for freedom's sake. In July, an ill-starred bid for freedom, with 200 convicts in an orgy of rioting and destruction behind the grim walls of Auckland's Mount Eden Jail. Causing a regular riot in Sydney's community affairs, the announcement that the price of that controversial building on the foreshores is rocketing up to around 30 million pounds. Amidst the bare steel and concrete, Australia's Joan Sutherland attends the first official function to be held in this expensive piece of culture. VIP farewells and hellos during 65. An emotional goodbye to retiring Governor-General Lord Delisle, Dame Patty Menzies, obviously affected by the occasion. The announcement of his successor, Lord Casey, seemed calculated to bring back the smiles. Here was a prominent Australian and a popular choice visiting royalty, and in the vanguard that veteran globetrotter Prince Philip started production of our decimal currency. Former Governor-General, the Duke of Gloucester dropped in, with the Duchess still showing signs of their car accident. Also visiting, Lord Mountbatten inspects our northern defences, casting an experienced eye over men of the Pacific Islands Regiment. Royalty surprised the older generation, but delighted the younger, by creating the Beatles, MBE. In sport, Kel Nagel makes golf history with a tie in the US Open. But in a playoff, he's beaten by the South African Gary Player. <laughs> Mr. British Open, Peter Thompson does it again. The fifth time. In Australia, Bruce Devlin sinks a short putt to win the Masters Tournament, defeating some of the world's top golfers, and thus ending a run of seconds. On the centre court of the tennis maker Wimbledon, an All-Australian final with Roy Emerson and Fred Stolle battling out the men's singles. Emerson added another cup to the mantelpiece, and Margaret Smith followed his lead by defeating Brazil's Maria Bueno. Back home on the Hawkesbury River, 13-year-old Paul McManus takes the world record for barefoot water skiing. Setting 12 records during a two-month international tour, Australia's Ron Clark. It's a long way from torchbearer for the 1956 Melbourne Olympics to world beater, but Clark at 28 takes Movie Tone's title as Australia's champion of the year. Centre of sensation and controversy, Jet Age mermaid Dawn Fraser, banned for 10 years by the Swimming Association. Most familiar sight of the year, screaming hysterical feminine teenagers adoring their idols. Least hysterical but luckiest, Maureen Cox, who matrimonially captured her very own pet beetle. While skin diving champ Val Taylor captured a lobster as a pet. No matrimony, of course. But in Victoria, Mrs. Nora Russell goes one jump ahead with her footballing friend, thus adding a pet wallaby to the family. What, no green and gold blazer? 
In Sydney, 65's wedding bells rang for Hollywood film star Jane Powell and new hubby, tall Jim Fitzgerald. Also down the aisle in the sporting nuptials of the year, Dawn Fraser and Queensland bookmaker Gary Ware. December seals the fate of Federal Minister Bill McMahon, who wed socialite Sonia Hopkins. From church to nursery, to find former Miss International Beauty Tanya Verstack admiring Nina, youngest of the youngs. But across the Tasman, the stalk multiplied by five. So now there's Shirlene, Selina, Deborah, Lisa and Samuel, New Zealand's most famous little citizens. And as the proud parents, Mr and Mrs Lawson would agree, we reckon that's about enough for one year. Now 65 has passed and it's Christmas again. For the very young, this means a whispered request for that special something and the joy on Christmas morning when it comes true. 